All right, today we're going to be graphing the sine and cosine graph. In order to do that, you really want to understand that unit circle. So make sure that you're thinking through it again. I'm filling out a blank one if you need to, because that's going to bring it all together here. So we'll start by filling out this table. So I've got my table of values right here on the side, and we are going to fill that out. As a reminder, sine is the y value on that unit circle. So if we think about negative pi, and when we go to the negative side, we are going clockwise. So that is going to end up at the same location there as pi. And so our y value there is zero. At negative pi over two, our y value there is negative one. At zero, our y value is positive one. Sorry, at zero, it is zero. Okay, at pi over two, our y value is one. At pi, our y value is zero. At three pi over two, our y value is negative one. And at two pi, our y value is zero. And the reason why I'm doing the y value on the um, coordinate points of the unit circle, again, is because it's the sine graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph what we've got at negative pi, it is zero. At negative pi over two, it is negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is negative one right here. I'll label it off to the side and this is positive one. At zero, it is zero. At pi over two, it is one. At pi, it is zero. At three pi over two, it is negative one. And at two pi, it is zero. This pattern continues. So right here, we would be at positive one and then zero, negative one. On this side, we'd be back at positive one. So what our sine graph looks like is this right here. That is one period of the sine graph. One period is one full cycle and it is two pi. So our sine graph has a period of two pi. So I'll go ahead and put that there. It goes from this point until it returns back to this point here and we have a full cycle of it. And then it repeats. So as you move on to the sine graph here, the rest of it, it is going to repeat. All of our values are between negative and one and one. So our range goes from negative one to one, every single one of those values is gonna fall between those as we move on and continue that cycle. Our domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity as it goes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. The amplitude is half the distance from the center to the top, from top to bottom, or the distance from the center to the top or the center to the bottom. So the amplitude in this case is one. It is one unit from the center to the top and one unit from the center to the bottom. This is the parent function for our sine graph. Now we're going to look at our parent function for the cosine graph. Those are the two we're gonna focus on today. So here is our cosine graph and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll start by filling out our um, table of values here. And so at negative pi, our x value is negative one. And the reason why I'm doing the x value is because it's cosine. Remember, cosine was the x value on the unit circle. Negative pi over two, that is zero. At zero, our x value is one. At pi over two, our x value is zero. At pi, our x value is negative one. At three pi over two, our x value is zero. And at two pi, our x value is one. So now we're gonna graph these points. And so we start at this zero one. So one full cycle of our cosine starts right here at zero negative I'm sorry, zero positive one. And then it goes through this side until it hits negative, um, positive one again. So right here, 
This is one full cycle or the period of the cosine, which again is two pi because it goes from zero to two pi. That gives us one full cycle of the cosine graph. The cosine, just like the sine, will repeat. And so the rest of the graph would look like this and it would continue on forever. So our domain is also negative infinity to infinity. Our range is also negative one to one because this low value here is at negative one and the highest value is one. It too has an amplitude of one because from the center to the top, it is one. And from the center to the bottom, it is one. That's what that amplitude measures right there. I'll make a note. Amplitude right here. And then for the period, it is insert here. We'll go ahead and make those same notes on the sign one so that you've got that as well. This is the amplitude from the center to the top or the center to the bottom. And then one full cycle is from zero to two pi. So the period of both the sine curve and the cosine curve is two pi. And then our parent function for the cosine looks like this. As we look at these graphs, they have, they're very similar to each other. Um, they both have the same amplitude. So they go from negative one to one on the entire graph. Um, the big difference is our sine curve starts here at zero, zero. And our cosine curve starts at zero, one. So that's gonna be the two different uh, is that you're going to see between the sine and the cosine graph. All right, so we're going to look at some of the differences here with transformations now. We've talked about transformations with almost every function we've dealt with, and A, B, C, and D never change. Now, on many occasions, you heard me say that the B value didn't make a lot of sense with the algebra two functions. It makes a whole lot of sense with the sine functions um, and the cosine and the trig functions. The A value here is what's going to affect our amplitude. So A value is our amplitude. And if you remember, that's because A was a vertical stretch. Now the B value is going to affect the period. So it does change what this graph looks like, unlike the ones with the um, regular algebra two functions that we had. You could make a vertical stretch and a horizontal stretch look the same. In this case, you cannot make a vertical stretch and a horizontal stretch look the same because the B value is going to change the period. We take that two pi, which was the regular period for both sine and cosine, and we divide it by the B value. Now, the other two shifts are the same. That's the right and left. And then D is the up and down. So when we look at these graphs with all of the transformations, you can get a lot of the information from it. We'll start with this one here, four cosine two X. So it's got something in the place of the A, and it's got something in the place of the B. We said A affects the amplitude. So our amplitude here is going to be four. That means from the center to the top of the graph, it's going to be four. And from the center to the bottom of the graph, it's going to be four units. For the period, we take two pi and we divide it by our B value, which in this case is two. And so here it is pi. Now we're going to have a full cycle within a pi units. Um, so remember here, we had a full cycle from this point to this point on the cosine curve. Now we're gonna have a full cycle from here to here because the period is pi. So that means all of this is going to appear at this point. All right, for the phase shift, that's left or right. In this case, that is nothing since there's no C value. So we would have no phase shift and no vertical shift. For our domain, that is negative infinity to infinity, which is gonna be true for all cosine and sine graphs since it goes forever to the left and right. And for the range, it is gonna go from negative four to positive four because the amplitude has changed it. And so from the center to the top and the center to the bottom, it's gonna be four units. All right, so here is another one. It's got all of our transformations in there just so that we can see what those look like. So our amplitude is going to be three. That comes from the A. For our period, we take two pi and we're gonna divide it by one half because that's the B value. Remember when you're dividing fractions, that's keep change flip. 
So we're going to take two pi and we're gonna flip this bottom one and multiply it. So that would be two pi times two, which is four pi. That means we're stretching it horizontally this way. So one full cycle is gonna occur through four pi. This would go to the left pi. This would go up two. Our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Now this one, you're gonna to have to put a little more thought to it because it has that up two. This is going to be where the center is at two. The amplitude is three, so it's gonna go up three and down three from two. So our range would go from negative one, because that would be three units south of that two, and then three units up would be five. So this graph will go from negative one to five. All right, here is another one. This has no A value there. So the amplitude is gonna be the same as the parent function, which is one. There is no B value there. So the period is going to be the same as the parent function, which is two pi. This has moved to the right, two pi over three, and down four units. Again, for our range, we're gonna really have to think through this. Negative four is, where, is going to be where the center is. And so if we went down one for the amplitude, it would be at negative five. And if we went up one from negative four, that would be at negative three. All right, so to graph using these transformations, we've got the instructions here. It says to find the period of the function first, because that's gonna tell you how much you have to complete a full cycle in. Then you're going to plot the sign's first point on the origin and use the period length to plot another point. Plot a point on the x-axis between the points you just graphed. Then between the, these three points, if A is plus, go up A, then down A. If A is negative, go down A, and then up A. Now remember to shift points left or right, opposite of C, and up or down, the same as D. So here is our first graph. We're gonna start off pretty easy. Y equals three times the sine of X. This is in the place of A. So our amplitude has changed by three. There is nothing in the place of B. So our period is still going to be two pi, just like the parent function. Our domain is gonna be all real numbers and our range is gonna go from negative one to one. Sorry, no, it's not. We did have an amplitude change there. And so it is going to go from negative three to three because we're gonna go down three and up three from our center, which is zero. All right, so we're gonna start by finding the period, which we did, it was two pi. Then we're going to plot the first point on the sine graph, which is at zero, zero. Then it says that the cycle is two pi, so we know it's gonna have to go back to two pi there. In the middle of those two points, we would be back at zero there. And then it tells us that if A is positive, we're gonna go up A. So we would go up three units in this middle part here, and then down three units over here. There is one full cycle. When graphing, we're expecting um, three cycles if there's enough space on here. Um, if it has been horizontally stretched, then you're only gonna get one or two, but we want at least three if you have enough space. Um, if it goes more to five, six, seven cycles, then you just have to put the three. Then as we go this way, it's gonna be the same process. We're just repeating the pattern. And so there is our graph. All right, we're gonna try another one here. We've got y equals sine of one half x plus two. In this case, the amplitude has not changed, so it will be one. We do have a B value. So to find our period here, we're gonna take the two pi and we're gonna divide it by one half. So we flip and multiply. And so it tells us that an entire period is going to happen in four pi. And then it's gone up two. So we are horizontally stretching this one by quite a bit. So we start our sine graph by going to the origin, which is zero, zero. This has moved up two. So our first point is going to be at zero, two. 
Now, we do not complete a full cycle until four pi, which happens to be completely off our page. So half of four pi would be right here. We're only gonna get half of the cycle there. So in between those would be one half and we would go up one unit from there. And that is going to give us the top part here. Now I do have another pi on this side. So I'm gonna go down one unit to the pi. And then at two pi, it would be back at its original. And so there is one whole cycle over four pi because there's the negative two pi here and then another two pi gives you four pi. From zero to four pi here would be our entire other cycle. Our domain for this one is negative infinity to infinity. And this is going from one up to three. So there is our range. All right, now we're adding a lot of transformations here. So we're gonna do one with all of them. Just so you know, on the quiz or test, we're gonna try and stick to three at the most of the transformations, but this one's got all of them just so you can see it, how it works. All right, so our amplitude is three. I did not put a negative three because it is the absolute value since it's a distance. For our period, we would take two pi and we divide it by the B value, which is two. Notice it is factored out of that. If it wasn't factored, we would have to factor it to get it in its correct transformational form. And so here that simplifies to be pi. So this um, period on this one is gonna be one pi. For the shifts, we've got a left shift by pi over two, and we have a down by negative three. So there's a lot going on on this one. We'll start with um, what we know here. So this is the sine graph. So it would start at zero here, but it has moved down three. So it would be down here. This is gonna be my new center. Sometimes it helps if you just um, dot line so that you can see where these points are going. The amplitude is three. So one, two, three, my dotted line would go here. And then one, two, three, this is gonna be my lowest point on the graph. Um, that helps me draw it a little bit faster. Because at pi, I know it needs to be completely done. So at pi, it is going to be back at the zero there. And then right in the middle of that, I know it's also going to be at the new zero, which is that one. Since this is negative, it is going to go upside down. So I would go down first. But we still have one more thing to do, which is to move it left to pi over two. So I should not have made these so dark because I need to move each one of them pi over two to the left. So this one would go here, here, and here. That's gonna be my first cycle. So in the middle of this, I'm gonna be at the bottom and at the middle of these two, I'm gonna be at the top. There's one full so, um, cycle of that sine curve. From that point, it just repeats. So I see every third one is gonna have a point here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw those. And then from this point, it's gonna go up in the middle, down and up, down. Same thing on this side, it's gonna go down, up, And then I just connect my points. And there is my graph. Um, notice that within two pi, which is this one right here, I've gotten two full cycles in there. So one and then two, there are two cycles in that two pi. And that's because in this case, each cycle happens with one pi. So at every pi, there's gonna be a full cycle of our curve. For our domain, again, it's negative infinity to infinity. And its range goes from negative six to zero. All right, we'll try some cosine ones. 
The instructions here show you it's basically the same thing. You're gonna find the period of the function. You're gonna plot the cosines, first point, which is at zero, and then the A value. We're gonna plot cosine second point, which is the period and the A value. And then between those points, we're gonna go in the middle to do the plus or minus. So let's look at some of those. We'll start with an easy one again. Y equals four times the cosine of X. Our amplitude is four. The period hasn't changed and there's no shifts. So this one's an easier one. Our cosine now, instead of being at one, I'm sorry, zero one, it's going to be at zero four. You could go ahead and draw those lines again that make it easier to graph. You know it's gonna be between those two points. For two pi, it is gonna be back at its original spot there because our period is still two pi. Um, in the middle of that, it is going to be at the bottom here. And so our graph looks like this. Um, we continue the points. So all I have to do is repeat the same points that were there. And so there is our graph. And so our domain goes from negative infinity to infinity and our range is from negative four to four. All right, I am gonna go ahead and skip down here to the one that's got a lot. We have a reflection. We've got an amplitude change of two. Our B value is one half. So I take two pi and then divide it by one half, which gives me four pi. So this is gonna be one of those horizontally stretched ones. It has moved down six units. And so here we go. I go down. Oh, this may not have been a good one to graph here because we are gonna be a little bit off the graph on this one. Um, this is gonna be my new center, the one that went down six from the origin and then two up and two down for that since the amplitude is two. Now this is the cosine graph. And so it would be at the zero one, but because this is at a negative, we would flip it and then down the six. So it is going to be at the bottom here. Our period is four pi. This is off the screen over here. So we're not gonna be able to do that, but half of that is two pi. And so I know that at that point, it is going to be down or up in this case. In the middle of that, we'll be right here. We repeat on the other side. And so we get a graph. So from negative two pi to two pi, that is a full four pi. So you'll see the entire cycle there. Um, we can't see the rest since it kind of goes off the screen here. Our domain would be all real numbers. And our range goes from negative eight to negative four. That was graphing our sine and cosine curves. Make sure you practice these so that you get used to drawing the period, drawing out the amplitude and all of those things.